Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Due to high demand, I present the ultimate touch panel from Crestron, powered by AMD's ultra-efficient processor TPMC 8X. It is said that this panel was used by Sauron himself against Finrod in a magical battle during the first stage. Furthermore, it's a well-known fact that it was not Palantirs that were used for communication by Sauron and Saruman. They used TPMC 8 Texas to talk over Skype. In a more recent turn of events, I hear that Huawei was inspired by this panel with its amazing features to create the ultra-fast 5G network. So without further ado, let's see what makes this panel tick. Dock comes with one LAN port and two USB ports while having one more USB on the panel itself. Once the battery cover is removed, you will find the solid state drive with a massive 1 million 48,576 kilobytes of storage. Touch pen is composed of special polymeric material alloys that is firm but gentle, thus making sure that the screen will be unscratched over longer periods of time. Once the back panel is out, we can see the lightning fast Atheros AR5213 mini PCI wireless card, which is 80211 A, B and even G compatible card. With a compact flash card slot, sky is the limit, you can expand your storage even further, which I did and it brought my total internal storage to a whopping 9,437,000. 184 kilobytes. Processor is an extremely efficient AMD geode at 500 megahertz that was originally created by a company called Cyrix in their Media GX design. They were well known for their competitive products in the 90s and hit a rough patch when merged with national semiconductors, but their legacy still lives in this panel. For butter smooth multitasking performance, Samsung provided 524,288 kilobytes of RAM. Once we reassemble the panel and switch it on, we can access the panel's BIOS by tapping F1 key and modifying boot options. This way we can reinstall our own operating system. I found that Windows XP provides the best performance, so I erased the entire internal drive and installed a fresh copy of the same. Some of the drivers for the system I have found on the internet and some were taken directly from the original Windows XP embedded operating system. This was done by booting Ubuntu Lucid live version and backing up all original drivers. Also it is worth mentioning that you can boot Clonezilla Linux via the USB and create DD images of the original operating system just for safekeeping or archiving. As you can see, most drivers are successfully installed, apart from one driver that I'm unable to find. So if somebody is familiar with this specific device, I would appreciate your advice in the comments below. With a little tinkering and help from Google, I managed to extract my radio streams from TuneIn website and play them in FUBAR Audio Player, which is well known for its low processing and memory footprint while maintaining excellent audio quality.
Gamers will be pleased to know that this panel offers unparalleled gaming experience, as it can emulate Sega Genesis by Genesis Emulator and Super Nintendo with ZSNES Emulator without any issue, at a staggering resolution at 320 by 240 pixels. With 76,800 pixels at their disposal, gamers can enjoy all the best that 8 and 16-bit titles have to offer. Genesis emulator that was developed by Bloodlust Software, I will show in this video, it's one of the best emulators of its time, as it was possible to save games at any point via their GSX format, which is still used even today. If you came across some amazing in-game tunes, this emulator could save them to a file that you can later burn to a CD or a cassette and listen to them with your Discman or Walkman. I will go through a few titles in this video quick, showing the raw graphics performance that this panel has to offer. Last title is a game called Alien Soldier and was developed to push the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive to its absolute limits. If you try and run games in unsupported resolutions, it will show you a white screen like in this case with Mortal Kombat 4. However, fear not, you can always play this game in a window. Next, I will briefly show several Linux distributions running on this panel. And as a note for all of you that might want to try this, Use VGA equals 788 option at boot, as this will force 800 by 600 resolution with a 16-bit palette, which works best on this panel. First up we have Antix, which is a distribution focusing on older machines. It is based on Debian, which is quite popular and well maintained. There is plenty of software available for this distro, and of course if you find something specific that you need, you can always compile it from source. Next up is Debian Mate, which comes with GNOME version 2, and this is a desktop environment which is arguably one of the best ever made. It offers a familiar set of applications which can be easily expanded by their software manager. Last Linux distribution that I will show is Puppy Linux, which works very well on the system and has many many flavors to it. They even have a version called Puppy Arcade, which packs in many console and computer emulators and offers hours and hours of gaming fun. It's important to know that whichever Linux distribution you go for, kernel versions that work best are around 2.6.32. They have direct support for this hardware. Also keep in mind that this processor does not have physical address extension management feature, which means that it can only support up to 4096 megabytes of RAM. Best place to search all things Linux is a website called DistroWatch, where you can refine your search criteria and just browse away. If you decide to go for any of these distributions, you can just download the ISO files and burn them to your USBs and give them a try.
Before ending this video, I would like to show yet one more feature of this panel. When it was said that this ATEX will be discontinued and replaced by TPMC ATEX GA, which stood for graphically accelerated, many hardcore fans were disappointed and were told that it is because it cannot support Core 3 UI. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. A quick Core 3 UI layout via Mozilla Firefox and Adobe Flash plugin. As you can see, after loading the page and settling in, animations are rather smooth. If layout is created in exact resolution on the panel, you can go full screen with F11 and it can act as a normal touch panel. X panel as well is supported and works quite well. Well, it seems that once again we have reached the end of line. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I shall see you in the next one.